I'm Jim Delgado. I'm a maritime archaeologist, and I have the good fortune to be the president of the Institute of Nautical Archaeology at Texas A&M University. I love maritime archaeology, nautical archaeology, because it's, it's connected to so much of human history. George Bass, the father of scientific underwater archaeology, said it best. He said, imagine history without the Vikings, without pirates, without clipper ships, without the great ocean steamers. Imagine history without the, the sea. Not only because the sea covers so much of this planet, but because the sea has been a connective link with trade and commerce, with immigration, whether it's forced immigration such as slavery or voluntary immigration. Uh, war at sea, all of these things together have been written large in the, in the history of the world because of the dominance of the sea, or lakes and rivers. And so nautical and maritime archaeology gives us insights into this very large aspect of our history, but also because underwater sites oftentimes have sunk in conditions that leave them better preserved, thanks to the preservative effects of, of being buried in mud and water. When I was a kid, I had all sorts of things that interested me, but in particular history and archaeology interested me. But it wasn't just memorizing dates and names and places, because that was sort of boring. What made history exciting for me was actually seeing it and touching it and having it come to life. And so as an archaeologist, I've had the opportunity to do that. I have seen history exactly where it happened. And at times, I've been the first person to actually go into places and to be the explorer who brings that story back, that's exciting, it's fun, it, uh, it, it sings, it rocks, it, it's, it happens, and it's not just a whatever kind of a thing. Um, because you know, you know it here in your heart, and you can see it, and you can feel it, and almost taste it, and, and you can touch it when you're an archeologist. And that, that, man, that's a time machine. That's an opportunity to go back if you've got a good imagination and actually see what it was like. And through those experiences of being an archaeologist, uh, long before they ever did this on reality television, I wanted to see exactly what that was like. So yes, after doing some of these digs, I have worn that armor. I have ridden that horse with the cavalry in a charge. I have carried that sword and swung it or that spear. I have gone to the bottom of that mine and used the, the ancient equipment. I have sailed in those ships and seen the canvas billow and snap. I have shoveled coal into the boiler. I've done all of that. And that, too, helps you live beyond the confines of your own life and who you are and where you are at any given moment in time. The world is a big and fascinating place now. It always has been. And as an archaeologist, you can grab hold of it and you can learn a lot about it and it's not